So if you look at, in the context of enhanced recovery protocol, where you have a number of stimuli that can provoke nausea and vomiting, and there are a number of strategy within the enhanced recovery protocol that try to reduce that risk of post-op nausea and vomiting. For example, using short-acting anesthetic agents, avoiding opioid by using peripheral nerve block epidurals that I'm sure you learn a, a lot from the, this uh, meeting to, uh, here. Nutrition is important, avoiding sodium fluid overload, giving patients anti-emetic therapy. So all these things reduce the incidence of PONV. And there are these classes of drugs that I showed you earlier that act on these receptors that has been shown to be effective in managing post-op nausea and vomiting. Now, we also know because of five receptors are involved, so we have no idea which receptor is implicated in a particular patient. As a result, by using combination, drugs that work on more than one of these receptors in many studies have shown to have increased efficacy. So this notion of combination antiemetics should be thought about in every single case because monotherapy will only reduce the risk by a certain amount. But if you want to reduce it further, you need to combine drugs that act on two or three of these receptors. So this combination involving two or three antiemetics really should be the, uh, the guide for high-risk patients. So if you think about how do I manage a patient when I see them in the pre-op holding area? So first of all, think about the risk factors. How many risk factors do that patient have? And also, don't forget about patient preference. We talk about this new healthcare system where patient is in the, should be in the center. And sometimes we don't ask the patients and also about the type of surgery that a patient is undergoing. Maybe some surgery you really do not want the patient to throw up. Facelift, eye surgery, neural procedures, where increased retching and vomiting can increase intracranial pressure. So those things have to be considered when you are managing how do I best avoid post-op nausea and vomiting. And then, Talk, think about how can I reduce what we call the baseline risk. So in other words, by adequately hydrating the patients, by potentially you know, reducing um, some of the drugs that provoke nausea and vomiting, opioids, for example. And then beyond that, think about appropriate antiemetics prophylactic therapy. This is the SAMBA guidelines. Uh, which was last published in 2014. We are upgrading the guidelines as we speak and essentially give you a guide on how to manage these problems. Screen patient for risk factors. Number one, using combination antiemetics. Avoid nitrous oxide, avoid GA, mainly because of volatile anesthetic. In fact, intravenous anesthesia, which is more widely practiced in Europe, propofol, is an antiemetic. And if you use propofol as the base of your anesthetic, you can essentially treat that as giving one antiemetic. Minimize post op opioids, provide adequate hydrations. Guidelines. Society provide guidelines and encourage people to follow the guidelines. So as you can see here, if you come from an institution that has the guidelines and actually implement it, you are compliant with the guidelines, your institutional nausea and vomiting incidents will go down. And this is something that your administrator would really appreciate what you do. And it has been shown that if you were to comply with the guidelines, whether it's the SAMBA guidelines or whatever guidelines, your incidence of POMV as an institution will decrease. Now, let's talk a little bit about treatment because we have a lot of drugs that we use for prophylaxis, but what about treatment? Because 
of the various receptors involved. If you give a drug that occupies one of the receptors, let's say serotonin receptors on Dancitron, a very common drug used for prophylaxis, and if the patient in the PACU develops nausea and vomiting, is it worth to give on Dancitron again? And the answer is no. As this study shown, and this study, every patient was prophylaxed with ondansetron, and then they developed nausea and vomiting in the PACU, and they randomized them into a group that received ondansetron again versus a group that received placebo, and they found there was no difference. So that, that suggests that if you give ondansetron as a prophylaxis, repeating ondansetron as a treatment drug does not work. So you need to move to a drug that acts on a different receptors.